Soil Introduction Soil is the uppermost layer of the Earth's crust and is usually composed of a thin layer of mineral particles and a layer of dead and decayed plant and animal remains called humus. However, soil does not have the same properties everywhere and therefore supports different varieties of plants in different areas. That is why we have some states growing more of a particular crop than others and not as much of some other crop. Soil formation Soil formation is a slow, stepwise process and it takes thousands of years to form a layer of soil just a few centimeters thick. It is a result of the continuous breaking down of rocks by a process called weathering. Weathering is the disintegration of rocks on the Earth's surface caused by exposure to natural forces such as wind, water, frost, roots of plants, etc. Weathering Physical weathering In this process, rocks are broken down into smaller pieces. It is a mechanical process and does not involve any change in the characteristics of the original rock. It may be caused by temperature differences, frost, growing roots of plants, movement of animals, etc. Chemical weathering Chemical weathering is a process in which existing minerals are broken down into new mineral components. In such a case, the chemical nature of the rock gets altered. Water, due to its ability to dissolve a larger number of substances in itself, is one of the main agents of chemical weathering. Weathering The process of weathering can be divided into three stages. Stage 1 Huge pieces of rock begin to break up near the surface due to weathering which can be physical or chemical. Stage 2 Bacteria and other microorganisms break down plant or animal remains to form humus. This makes the soil rich in organic material and in several minerals vital to plant growth. The presence of humus makes the uppermost layer of soil very fertile. Stage 3. Minerals and salts seep into the ground along with water to complete the formation of soil and make it favorable for plant growth. Soil Profile Soil is composed of distinct layers. Perform the following activity to find out how these layers are arranged and then add a handful of soil to it. Stir it well with a stick to dissolve the soil. Now, let it stand undisturbed for some time. Afterwards, observe it. You see layers of particles of different sizes in the glass tumbler. The rotting dead matter in the soil is called humus. A vertical section through different layers of the soil is called the soil profile. Each layer differs in texture, color, depth and chemical composition. These layers are referred to as horizons. Sandy soil More than two-thirds of sandy soil is sand and about one-third is clay. It is made up of relatively large particles with large air space. The porosity of the soil prevents retention of water. Sandy soils, therefore, drain water quickly. It is well suited for fruit and vegetable cultivation. The soil dries up very easily. Clay soil More than two-thirds of clay soil is clay. It is made up of fine particles with small air spaces. This soil retains moisture and becomes very sticky when wet. Dry clay soil becomes hard and forms deep cracks. To improve the soil, we can add chalk. Loamy soil It is a mixture of sand, silt and clay particles and usually has a high humus content. It is porous and also holds moisture. It is good for cultivation and gardening. Soil erosion Soil erosion is a serious problem that farmers face today. It removes the fertile topsoil, 
reducing the productivity of the soil in that area. The main agents of erosion are wind and water. The removal of soil by running water and wind is known as soil erosion. Generally, the rate of removal of fine particles from the surface is the same as the rate of formation of soil. But sometimes, there may be a disturbance in this balance, usually man-made, which may lead to a greater rate of removal of soil. This results in an increase in soil erosion. Causes of Soil Erosion Deforestation The removal of trees on a large scale is known as deforestation. You know that the roots of trees and plants hold the soil particles together. When trees are removed, soil particles are left loose and can be easily carried away by running water and wind. Floods and heavy rainfall Floods and heavy rainfall cause a lot of damage to the soil, especially when there are no trees and the land is lying bare. Overgrazing Repeated grazing by animals on the same patch of land without sufficient recovery periods leads to the removal of grass on a large scale. This makes it easy for wind and running water to erode the soil. Improper farming Traditional methods of farming on hills makes it easy for wind and water to erode soil. Prevention of soil erosion Aforestation The process of planting trees in large numbers on deforested land is called aforestation. The roots of trees hold the soil particles together, thus making it difficult for water and wind to erode the soil. Grasses and herbs can be used to cover large patches of loose soil. Flood control Floods can be controlled to a large extent by building dams. Restricted animal grazing Overgrazing of a single patch by animals should be avoided. Animals should be moved to a different area after some time. Constructing buns Embankment or mud walls should be constructed around hill slopes or fields to stop the flow of water. Terrace farming. It is a method of farming adopted in hilly areas. In this method, suitable crops are grown on sloping ground which is cut into large steps called terraces. Terrace farming reduces the speed with which water flows down, thereby reducing the amount of soil being carried away. Soil Pollution The major sources of soil pollution Acid rain and acid water from factories, mines and industries, improper dumping of garbage and sewage waste in soil, excessive use of pesticides and fertilizers which get accumulated in soil, waste materials like plastic and metals which do not decay easily, spilling or leakage of chemicals. Control of Soil Pollution the following measures will help to control soil pollution. Solid waste should not be dumped on land. Instead, they should be recycled. Also, proper measures for disposal of sewage should be adopted. Animal and domestic waste should be used to produce biogas.